Good morning, my friends. How are you today? How are you surviving record heat temperatures? Are you, how are y'all doing? It has been so hot here, but not hot compared to some places. So I'm thankful for that, but man, phew, it's hot. All right, so today I wanted to do a video on just explaining and answering a question I had in my last video. The question was, love your videos. Could you explain your routine with the once a day milking? Like age you separate, how long, and how that looks like when you wean? Thank you for the helpful info. That's a very good question because I love to milk my goats, but I also don't want to be tied down completely, completely with having to milk twice a day. And I have found for the last several years, more than several, I have been just milking once a day and it works really good for our family. We get enough milk for all of us. I even have enough milk right now for a bum calf and the babies are still on their moms. And all of that just is perfect for our situation and setup. We even went on a little vacation a week or so ago and and that even helps with that too because a, the the person that watches your farm only has to milk once a day instead of twice a day and that really helps out a lot so my patient faith is waiting for me over here I have Eva you can tell she's got some babies in there it is so weird to have a goat large and voluptuously pregnant through the summer months. It's just, I've never had that before. So next month, she will be having her babies. So I gotta talk to them. Hello, babies. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah. Oh, oh I feel I'm moving. Hello, baby. I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> so I start off with washing them thoroughly. I've got my iodine mixture here that I, it's just iodine, um, watered down a bit with some water and then I just spray them up really good, get them cleaned up and then I milk. So the thing to know is that when you do it this way, sometimes you'll get more milk than other days. So sometimes the babies, you know, I'll, I'll come out and the mamas will be laying down and then they'll get up and immediately the babies are like, ooh, food, food, food. And so they'll get their drink in and then I bring the goat in. And then other times they've not done that. So really it, it's a very, it fluctuates. There's not a consistent amount of milk that you'll get doing it this way just because of that. But with, I'm milking five goats right now and it's definitely enough for my family, other families, and the calf, so. Yeah, Faith, get over there. So I can tell that Faith is more well endowed this morning. She's got a bit more than normal, so. And really, hers are getting to that point where they need to be weaned. Anyways, that, that'll affect it too. They're, they're coming on, so they were April, April, May, June. Yeah, so they're three months old right now. So they're getting to the point of needing to be weaned and, and go to their new home. So really, I guess that's something you, as, as you work through this with your own herd of when they're, they're having their babies, I already have a video on my channel about when you can start milking and, and the different ways that you can wean or separate to milk. So I'm not gonna go into all of those details in this one, but you can definitely go and watch that one because it has a lot of helpful information in it. So I think it really, it really just comes down to using just your wisdom, knowledge of your goats and your setup and your situation as you work through just how much milk. Now, when you milk, the goats, when they're raising their babies, they will save and not let down milk so that their babies can, can have the milk if that's, that's needed. It's like they just know how to do that. For all goats, it's different. So I have several different types of goats as far as milk goes and um, some of them 
like the light, are making a huge amount more than their babies. But then Fiona isn't. And when I milk her, I'm not getting much from her now because her babies are on her. And, and so I guess that's something you just kind of got to feel out and work through. Mama. Switch goats. Okay, here comes Fiona. Alright, Faith. Let's get you out of here. You cause problems when you stay in. Yeah, you just think you're the star on the show. You do. Yeah. Having to come in. Go, oh, Faith! No, you don't get to come in. No, <laughs> stinker. <sighs> and so Fiona here is the one that I mentioned that doesn't produce a lot of milk outside of her babies. And so when you have the kids still on your dough, you just stand and when you're milking once a day and just starting, it's going to be kind of a learn and adapt. You're going to learn your goat. You're going to learn what works. And, and just kind of work through the issues and, and, and just how your goats are as you and they adapt to milking once a day. Opalia is such a funny goat. Uh, I forgot to give her some grain, just a second. There you go. All right, let's try that again. She is such a funny goat. She has a lot of personality. <laughs> Just like her mama. Her mama is Olivia. <laughs> and so she's producing milk for three babies. And whoever can sneak in a little bit, like I shared in the last video. Oh, it's so funny. As far as weaning, I wean about at three months of age about, uh, I don't know, I like to keep the, especially the girls on their mama as long as possible. I wean the boys and then I guess as far as the boys, I've been doing three months because then they have more time to develop and then right before they go to their new home, I castrate them. And so that's something to just consider. Uh, so I keep them on for those three months and then they go to their new home and the boys are castrated when they go home. Good girl. Good girl. I feel like milking this way once a day is really like the best of both worlds. I get the milk, the babies get the milk, but I'm not tied down. I can do all my chores in the morning, but in the evening if we want to go do something fun, if we want to go out to eat, if we want to just do chores that aren't as extensive in the evening, uh, we can do that. And, and it's not a problem. It's wonderful. You're stuck. If you don't, just wait the light. No! <laughs> you! Stop! Go away! Please stop, you guys. <laughs> Whew, this dust, just because it's so dry, is affecting us all. Whew. It is so dry outside. We're having a record drought, record dry year, and grasshoppers in the area. It's kind of been a little, I don't know if the word scary, for a lot of people in the area. You know, the thought, the question, what are we going to do with our cows? What are we going to do with our animals? How are we going to feed them? How about in your area? Has it been the same? Have you been going through the, the same fears? Is it happening there too? The people hanging in our area, you know, they've been getting a fourth of what they normally do. 
with no hope of regrowth for a second cutting. Well, so even for my goats, I've been wondering what we're going to do for hay. And it's kind of a, a scary thought, but it's also a really good opportunity to practice my faith. And do I believe that God will supply all of my needs according to his glorious riches? Do I trust his promises? And do I really believe he's faithful? So it's a good opportunity to really see what's in my heart and to just trust him in everything, to guide us where we need to be and what we need to be doing um, as far as feeding our animals. So I wanna show you the difference just a little bit of time can make. So the last video, you can see the delight was, she did okay, she jumped up fairly well. But now she's like eager to get, in, to get into the barn. She's pushing in, trying to beat all the others. And she just jumps up here like a pro, like she's been doing it all along. <laughs> I'm still tying her feet back, but it's so wonderful to see that she is like eager to get up here and, and ready to do it. So again, I just know that I've gotten quite a few messages from people saying, oh, help, my goat is being so naughty on the milk stand. Is there any hope? And... <laughs> but that my goat is just being naughty, being so difficult to milk. And I get it. I understand the frustration and that it's true you cry over spilled milk. But I also can say, don't give up. Keep working at it. They get it after a while. Some goats are more stubborn than others, but just keep working at it, being patient and making it a good experience for them. And they will come around. So I guess that's my encouragement for you that are struggling with a goat that's difficult to milk. Get you out of here so we can get the light in, okay? Let's go. Yay, didn't she do so good? What? What? Good job, Delight. That was, oops, you didn't get your head though. You forgot to open it, huh? Well, let's fix that. Hopefully without any issues. There you go. Alright, let me get you some of this. Still doing the hobbles on her. She still lifts up her leg. And she's just would she would definitely put her foot in the milk and spill it. She's just big go. I've also been asked this several times. So I shared in another video about my after teat spray, after milking teat spray. And people have asked, well, do I use that if the goats still have their babies on them? And so no, I don't. I milk them out and then the mamas go out and usually the babies nurse and I don't put that on. And I just trust the process that the saliva in the baby goat has what it needs to, to protect and and keep her her clean and safe so not that something doesn't ever happen but there's some built-in process there that works so no i do not use that teat spray um when I, the babies are on them but when i wean them then i will start using it See, she's doing really good. It's when she gets to the end of eating her grain that she gets antsy, and if I'm not done, she gets antsy and then starts to step and step and, and rock, and if her feet weren't tied back, we'd have a mess of a milk. 
So I hope this gives you some ideas on how it can work for you and your goats and your family and your kids. And, and that it will keep you so that you're not as tied down, but you're still getting this delicious milk. As usual, check out the different playlists on, on, on raising goats on my channel. And I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a blessed day. What was the other questions? Did I answer them all? One thing I could share a bit more info on is just the weaning process. So last year, I had all my babies sold. They, they were weaned when they left home. And this year, I'm hoping the same thing will happen. And that seems to be the easiest way because then you don't have a bunch of bleating babies. Not bleeding, bleating babies uh, because I know we've had neighbors come over and say what's that noise it sounds like there's babies crying and like human babies and it's not but I guess that that's what I found is the easiest way but if that doesn't happen I have a separate pen that I will put them in and wean them that way I have also had um, a year where uh, one of my weathers didn't sell and the mama weaned him naturally. I didn't even, I, I left him in with the herd. Um, you know, he was uh, weathered already, so there wasn't issues of breeding or anything. And she just weaned him, and he never, was, you know, got separated from the herd. So, again, it's different with every goat. It's different with every situation and farm and setup. But there's lots of different options and way things work when you're, when you're dealing with animals and when you're when you're weaning. I think we got it. I'm eking it out. I almost got it. <laughs> Yay! Okay, we got it. I kind of made a mess with you tonight. You're rocking back and forth as you help you. So I wanted to also share with you how then I end this process right now. It's different during different seasons, but right now, because I have this calf to give milk to, I want to fill up my jars and then what's left, I will give the calf. So I bring out my jars, I strain it out here, make sure that you know those are all sealed up and clean and, and strained, and then I just give the rest of the calf. So with that nut butter bag, just look, that milk, there is not a speck of anything in it. There's no hair, no dirt, no hay, nothing. So it's all clean. So I love that about the nut butter bag, that it just keeps it all clean to begin with. One thing the nut butter bag does as well, it not only keeps out all the debris, it also keeps out the flies. The flies this time of year can get kind of annoying and just in the middle of stuff. And you don't want to turn around and find a fly swimming in your milk. So that's another really cool thing that it does as well. So I have a video on my channel. I know I'm always talking about the videos on my channel, but <laughs> it's just I have another video on my channel about the nut butter bag and in information about it and you can watch that too. I need to let some people know when they can pick up their new baby kids that they're getting from me. I have it all written down in here. Um, I've been forgetting to look in it and I just need to. Here we go, 2021. So, four. Um, so 17. So it looks like the middle of this month I can get them. It's so nice to have this information right at your fingertips where you don't have to remember it in your brain or try to find papers randomly here and there or notes on your phone. It's just right here, ready to be looked at. That is so helpful. Just at a glance, I can tell when <laughs> they're ready to, to head their, to their new homes and pretty good. All right, I'm down on the bowl. The calf. <laughs> so
so today, so yesterday I got a gallon and a half. Today I got probably a gallon and a quart, I would say, because this right here is half a gallon. So I'd say it's, it's about half of that. So a gallon and a quart. And, and that again is with the kids on them and only milking once a day. So definitely um, enough milk to go around and actually I'm trying to decide so I actually have been giving the calf a half a gallon so because today I don't have anyone picking up milk and we have enough in the fridge I'm actually just going to take some of this and dump it back in with the calf and that'll be good we'll all get enough there we go yeah Do you hear that calf? She's ready. Let's go feed her. And with it being so dry, our hay field has just completely dried up. There's nothing left to it. The goats are still going out there and getting what they can, but I'm also feeding hay still. Uh, just because I've got so many of them, just well, they're in milk, and they've got so many babies, and on and on. So. It's too bad because it's nice to have a little carryover, but I'll still be feeding hay through the summer. Oh well, God will provide. I keep telling myself that. Help me remember that. 